with the release of the Battlefront Classic Collection right around the corner. I thought it'd be fun to go back to Battlefront 2017 and do a tier list on the maps that we have right here. Obviously, this isn't all of them. This isn't for all the modes. This is just the maps we have laid out right here and my opinions on it because, honestly, these are the ones that I have played on the most, right? Um, whether it be Capital Supremacy, Galactic Assault, Heroes versus Villains, these are the maps that I have played on the most, just personally. I know there's other modes or there's other lists out there that have all of them in every mode, and that's that's not what I'm doing. I just wanna do a little, a little look back at Battlefront 2017. Now, when the Classic Collection drops and I've played nose deep into that game, then I believe I'll be able to do a tier list on the classic maps. But until that time, I thought it'd be fun just to look back at these ones and uh, rank them. Now, S tier for me will be maps I can play all day, all night, every single day. D tier maps are ones that I'm just like, get it out of the game. A tier is, hey, this is good. If I don't play it, then that's still fine, but it's it's amazing. B tier is, eh, it's okay. It's okay. C tier is kind of just forgettable or that I just really haven't played on too much. Um, so let's start this out. We'll list all the ones that are here. Kamino, Kashyyyk, Endor, Jakku, Yavin 4, Takodana, Felucia, Genosis, Hoth. I almost said Cantobite. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Crate. Moss Eisley, Scarif, Death Star 2, Feed, Star Killer Base, and Agent Gloss. Now, again, this isn't going to be based off of what modes I've played it in. I'm not going to rank the modes. I'm just going to rank, you know, the, my experiences and how I, how I feel about these maps. Now, we will start here and work our way down to Agent Gloss. First off is Kamino. Now, as a Clone Wars and Prequels fan, I love playing on Kamino. I wish that we could have got a sunset um, cycle. How You know how they have day-night cycles. I wish we could have had a sunset cycle like on the ARC Troopers episode of the Clone Wars. I think that would be really cool. But for me, Camino, I, I do have fun on it, but I'm going to put, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put Camino, you know, I'll put Camino in A tier. I'll, I'll put Camino in A tier. Um, Especially when you're running with the boys. When you're running with the fellow clones, it hits so different when you're playing as the clones. Especially, especially when you are defending the bunkers. You got to do it for 99. Anyway, Kashyyyk. Uh, I'm, I'm hit or miss with Kashyyyk because during the daytime, I love it. I love it as the droids and as the clones. But when it's the nighttime cycle, I cannot see anything. <laughs> um, again, I Kashyyyk. In Battlefront 2005, it's one of my favorite maps. This game, it's good. It's okay. You know, I I, I dig Kashyyyk. Endor. I love Endor. From Ewok Hunt to Capital or Galactic Assault. I love Endor. There's there's not really any mode that I'm biased to or that I, I favor on this map. I love Endor. Day night cycle doesn't matter. Because it's really cool to see like Grievous or Darth Vader in the dark with the sabers around all the vegetation and everything. It's really cool shooting the Ewoks that are running away from you <laughs> and them not getting not getting phases. Kind of weird, but I still love I love Endor, and I'm gonna put Endor right up here in S tier. I I could play it all day. I could play it all day. Jakku. Right here, D tier. I tell me, introduce me to someone who sees the butthole planet of Jakku show up on the loading screen, and they're like, "Oh, woohoo, Jakku! Yeah, let's play Jakku every day." No, Jakku to me is awful. It's an unnecessary uphill battle for the first order, which somehow, for some reason, I constantly spawn in as first order. And even if it is the resistance that I'm playing as, I just it's just bland to me. There's nothing interesting happening on Jakku. The the movies themselves make a joke of Jakku. So why would you want to play on it? It's 
forgettable to me. It's forgettable. I don't care about it. If it weren't in the game, I wouldn't be affected. So there you go. Yavin 4. Whenever we play on Yavin 4, I always yell, we're going to Yavin 4, boys. I love Yavin 4. For one reason is that it's a map and a planet that we never really spent a lot of time on in the movies or a lot of time with. Um, what also is cool is that you can actually go back inside the temple and see all the Y wings and X wings. And I believe there's some A wings in there and you can see them all preparing for the escape. Just like in the movie. I think it's pretty cool. Um, it, I don't know. I, I love Yavin four. So for that Yavin four is going up here. I have a great time on Yavin four taco Donna again, I planets that have a lot of vegetation. I really like, I know a lot of people have complained that, the enemy team can get in a chicken walker if they're attacking and just run straight through up to the temple. Use an ion shot or an ion torpedo. Sorry, excuse me. Use a heavy, equip the ion torpedo, take it down. Not that hard, people. Come on. Um, but Takodana, I think it's... I'm okay with it. It's it's right there, B tier. It's not amazing, but it's, it's, it's fine. When it, when it shows up in rotation, I'm like, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, Felucia. Felucia is another map that I loved playing in the original Battlefront 2. Um, I had so much fun with it. I still have so much fun with it in this in this game too. It hits me every time in the heartstrings whenever Anakin's Dark Deeds shows up when you are doing when you're in the loading screen. So for that, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Felucia right up here with Camino. I love it. I love it. But there are those times when you get hit with the pods or those little spores or those whatever it is, those acid thingamabobbers that just get me. And I'm like, stop it. So for that, that's why that's why it's down here. Geonosis. Um, I like it. it the, my first time playing on Geonosis, when you hit their escape ship and the, the droids escape ship and it comes down and the big old sandstorm happens. It's just like in the movie. It's crazy. I love Geonosis so much. Now there is that thing where you can play as Leia or you can play as the Ark Troopers and you can shoot that ion tracking shot in one shot, two shot people all throughout the second and third phase. And it is kind of a bummer, but I'm not going to knock it down a peg just because certain people play a certain way on a map. The map itself, amazing. I It's so immersive. It's beautiful. So for that, I'm putting it right here, right there, A tier. You know, it's not one that I'm like every day, every single day I want to play on on uh, Genosis. But, you know, if it shows up, I'm, I'm staying in. I'm locking in. Even if we got 11 people we're still looking for. Um, Hoth. Very few words. Hoth right up there, S tier. For me, Hoth's sound design just the 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 map design the graphics when you go into the caves like the wampa caves and you can hear the wind blowing it's it's crazy when it's sunset even more beautiful i don't care if i'm attacking defending winning or losing i'm always having a good time on hoth i i just think hoth is probably the most beautiful map in the entire game um so yeah i hoth up there s tier amazing crate I almost called it Canto Bite for some weird reason. Crate is another one that I'm like, okay, sure. I feel like the first phase, though, um, even though, like, the ATM-6s, they are not, you, you can't control them yourselves. They, like, auto-shoot at you. So that's kind of a bummer. But I feel like the first phase, even with that, is just Snipe City. So either you're going up top if you're defending, right? If you're defending and you're the resistance, you go up top, you're getting your head sniped off. You go down low, you're getting sliced up by Kylo Ren or another villain. Um, and then when you get back into the caves, there's not much. It all just kind of feels clumped together. Obviously, I understand what they're going for and, and all that stuff. Crate is just kind of eh to me. I it's it's okay. Like I don't I don't I don't hate crate by any means, but definitely not one of my favorite maps um oh, tatooine i'm sorry i'm sorry tatooine i don't like it i don't like tatooine that's just me every time it shows up i'm like oh my gosh because the day cycle is fine the night cycle yeah even still with the day cycle 
when the team has two people in AT uh, ATSTs that are coming after you. Even even without that, even without that, it's just kind of bland to me. It, it it doesn't. There's just not a lot there for me to care about when I'm playing when I'm playing um, on Tatooine. It's I, I it's just like right there for. Oh my goodness. It's right there for me with Jack Q. It's just bland. I don't care. Granted, yes, it's an OT map. That's cool. Jabba's Palace is fun to play on. Jabba's Palace is really cool. I think it would be cool if we get a Battlefront 3, if we got Moss Espa. I think that would be really cool. But for me, Moss Eisley, I'm, I'm kind of over it. I don't care. Scarif. I'm putting Scarif right here in C tier for the simple fact that I have played on it maybe a handful of times and it does kind of bum me out that we get a Rogue One map without Rogue One heroes. Um, it's kind of a bummer. Again, Scarif, I you really only play it in Capital Supremacy and is it battle scenarios or not battle scenarios, uh, instant action or co-op missions or whatever it is. It's rough. I when I have played on, I really liked it. I thought it was beautiful, but I haven't played on it enough to like form a real opinion. Um, Heroes versus Villains too, but those are few and far between. Um, I didn't play Battlefront 2015. I know a lot of people loved Scarif in that game. For me, uh, it's yeah, I don't. I, I can't. I, I I I had fun, but I don't remember it all too well because I played on it maybe three times. In the however many years this game has been out. Anyway, up next, we have Death Star 2. And Death Star 2 is going to go up here for me. I had really I had really fun. I really had fun on Death Star 2. Excuse me, let me bring that back down. I really had fun on Death Star 2. And uh, whether you're attacking, defending, I think it's really cool to see the fight going outside the hangars, the Death Star beam shooting out at the planets and all that stuff, even though like the Death Star beam goes off like six times. And I don't know, but it's really fun to play on Death Star 2. It's really fun to get immersed and play as like Luke with the green saber and Vader and all that stuff. But it's it's I don't know. It's just it's fun. It's fun. I haven't really had a bad experience on uh, Death Star 2. Feed. Now, this is a little biased. This is a little biased because I played the beta for this game. And if any of you remember the beta, when you played Galactic Assault, you were on Feed. So I played Feed a stupid amount of times. And I loved it every single time. Even though Naboo is probably my favorite planet in Star Wars, playing as the clones, defending the palace. Even playing as the as the uh, the droids and attacking, the inside of the palace is so detailed and so beautiful, and it's just it's I I love it. The tug of wars you can have at the final phase, and the overtime how it can go forever. It's it's I love it. I love it. Feed is going up there in S tier. Star Killer Base. Star Killer Base is okay. It's fine. I love the beginning phase. How I, I love how close quarters almost this entire map is for being a primarily outdoors map. I love it. Um, it does kind of get annoying when people are flying around and shooting out of the ground and all that stuff, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I see that as the same thing as here. I'm not going to base it, place it based off of um, how people play, but I, I have a lot of fun on star killer base. So I'm going to put that one right up here, right up here. Now we get to Agent Kloss, and I'm going to put Agent Kloss right here for the same same reason as Scarif is. I I think I've played on Agent Kloss less than I've played on Scarif. I think I've played on Agent Kloss maybe twice, and Scarif however many times I said. I think I was like five times or four or five times. Anyway, Agent Kloss for me, it looks cool. I haven't played on enough to remember much about it. I know they made a big stink about it in the celebration edition and they just never had you go to it again. I think it's the only capital supremacy and uh, heroes versus villains and co-op missions that you can go to agent Kloss, but still like I get it less than Scarif. Um, now honorable mention that's not in here is Obviously, there's Java's Palace, which, no, is still Tatooine. 
but Kessel. Kessel's not in here, but Kessel will go. I would put Kessel. I'd put Kessel around here too in C tier. Kessel's fine. It's kind of ugly to me. It does annoy me that they have the wrong Falcon on that map. Uh, that's a big thing for me. That's a big thing for me is the wrong Falcon on that map. Just get, I don't know why they did that, but okay. Anyway, that'll do it for this tier list. What do you think down below? What, what, where would you put your maps in this tier list? Like I said, when I've been able to sink my teeth into the collection, the classic collection, maybe I'll do another tier list ranking the classic maps. Um, I will be streaming that either over here on YouTube or over on Twitch. Links are in the bios. Hope you have a good day. I'll see you all in the next one.